Man, got around. OG Silver back here. Hey guys, um, so I finally feel like I've gotten myself settled in where I can start to regularly make some content for you guys, man. And um, there's going to be a threefold situation here. So, number one is uh, my. The content I'm going to be making is more or less documenting my life here in Southeast Asia and the trials and tribulations that I've been through to get uh, settled in, man, and dug in and just being able to live my life, man. So, as I'm sure you guys know, I got two other channels, Come Go With Me, which is actually my travels throughout, not just the Philippines, but Southeast Asia, because as you guys who have... Uh, been following me since I was in uh, California, Las Vegas. I'm here in Southeast Asia to uh, make movies and to teach martial arts. They're going to be building a wellness resort in 2024. So I just had an epiphany, guys. I was like, you know, never put off for tomorrow what you can do today. Plus, I was feeling very stagnant in Las Vegas, dude. Like, I want, I want to share this with you guys, man. I'm going to try to make this uh, video short, but I have a tendency of just giving you a lot, lot more bang for your buck. But, you know, after living in California for 30 years and, and traversing the whole California, just living the California lifestyle of beaches and, and women and making money in martial arts and bodybuilding and bodyguarding and bouncing and all this, all this California dreaming stuff, bro. You know, I thought I had a fulfilled life, but then I moved to Las Vegas. And I got to see that Las Vegas, to me, is way more California than California. The only difference is Las Vegas doesn't have beaches, but they got mountains, they got valleys, they got deserts, they got um, parks, you know. But what's very interesting about Las Vegas, it's, a, it's, a, it's the hub of capitalism, whether they, there's businessmen there, entrepreneurs, gamblers professional gamblers, showgirls, entertainers. I mean, I think it's like California steroids because everybody's there <laughs> for the purpose of making money exponentially. But you know, after being a bouncer there and making movies there and doing martial arts there, I don't know, my life had just hit a plateau, man, because uh, yeah, you know, Vegas has a lot of beautiful women just like California, but the women in Vegas, and no offense to anybody, I'm trying to be a more loving guy since I'm here in the Philippines. The women in Vegas are way more materialistic than the women in California. Like when I was in California, I didn't have a problem having like 15, 20, you know, girlfriends. It wasn't like monogamous relationship most of the time. But when I did have a monogamous relationship, I was faithful. But when I didn't have a girlfriend, I'm just kind of like going to the gym, going to the dojo, doing yoga, and just meeting women, you know what I mean? I'm a pretty um, extroverted guy. But, you know, they dealt with me based on my appearance and my personality. And, of course, you know, I dressed nice and I had nice things, had a nice car. But fast forward to Vegas, and I'm going to get to the point. In Vegas, it's all about who you are and who you know. It's, Vegas reminds me of uh, Los Angeles on steroids. Like, the women there, they immediately want to know who you are, who you're connected to how much money you making, what's your affiliation, you know, because uh, Vegas is run by basically gangsters. Like, if you guys didn't know the casinos and the gambling, it's ran by, like, mafia-type organizations. So, uh, being I wasn't affiliated with anybody, and I didn't really move here to date anyway, but I didn't really start dating women until after I was, like, in Vegas for about two weeks, and then I started... I started, uh, I was a bouncer at a nightclub that did open mic for rappers and poetry reading. So I met a, I met a young lady who was an actress. And, you know, she turned me on to acting, dude. And then uh, I was taking acting classes, met some people there. But as I started getting roles, and it just seemed like um, my life converged. As I was a bouncer, of course, you know, bouncers, you don't have a shortage of women, guys. And if you don't know that, you should Google bouncing and bouncers or watch bouncer movies like there's a movie called um the rise of a foot soldier it's all about bouncing just so you know uh vin diesel used to be a bouncer um who else um a couple other cats i can't 
name off the top of my head. But uh, bouncers, you, you don't have a shortage of women, trust me. So I just being a buzz, I was a bouncer. I started meeting women because Vegas is a lot of really rich and famous and entertainer type women go to nightclubs to party, right? So you just start meeting women and then going to movies and stuff, start meeting women. But my life had plateaued because I was just like, you know, after catching the macaroni, I was saying to myself, there's more life than making money and banging women, bro, and just being a wannabe badass training in martial arts and all that. I wanted to travel. So the point of this video is that, you know, as I'm making my metamorphosis, I'm going through a transformation, dude, not just um, mentally and spiritually and physically and intellectually and emotionally, but also, you know, just as a person, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm vibrating on a higher level. And I want to share, I guess what I'm trying to say, this channel is going to be about my transformation as a, not just a man, but as a human being living in um, East Southeast Asia, man, and experiencing Asian culture as opposed to Western culture. So this channel here, I'm going to basically be talking to you guys about, I'm practicing Stoicism and minimalism. And the reason I'm practicing Stoicism is because... Um, Stoicism has a, 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 like a few central teachings. It sets out to remind us of how unpredictable the world can be. You know, how brief our moment of life is and how to be steadfast and strong and in control of yourself. And then finally, guys, that the source of our own dissatisfaction lies in our own impulsive dependency on our reflexive senses rather than logic. So what I'm going to do on this channel is I'm going to share ancient stoic tenets to keep on the top of your mind, to apply to your daily thought processes, and to practice every day of your life. Because guys, as I, you know, live day to day here in the Philippines, and I've lived in, I've been in a lot of different cities here and provinces, man. I'm going to share those details with you, but I'm going to share with you how stoicism. And minimalism has literally transformed my life. Like, I, I did a 180 since I've gotten here. Yeah, I'm still a savage and I'm still a barbarian, but I'm more like a civilized savage because here you find yourself in situations where you don't want to allow anger or rage to be your first reflexive, you know, impulsive reaction. And it's for three reasons. Number one, dude, you're in a foreign country. And you want to be affable and get accepted by the foreigners. So you can't just go around lashing out at people. Number two, you don't want to end up in the penal system, bro. Because you're in the penal system. It's very atrocious here. I've seen um, documentaries on TV here. A lot, a lot of foreigners go to prison here. Just so you know. And then uh, once you get out of prison, you're blacklisted from the country. I'm, I'm here. I, lo I love this beautiful country. I love the people. I love my experiences, even though some of them are frustrating because they're not what I expected. <coughs> but number three, man, you don't want to go to a foreign country to lose your life. Like, I don't care. Like, I think a lot of young guys play too many first shooter games and and uh, these kind of fantasy role playing games that are on the Internet now. You can download and stuff. And they watch too much action and adventure movies. And I'm guilty of even you know, working on those movies, doing unrealistic fight scenes that make a little young dudes and women think they can beat up savages in real life. But I'm not here to, you know, lose my life because here, man, in, in the Philippines or any foreign country, I mean, if you if you fight one Filipino, you gotta fight them all. And this is not a movie. This is not a, a zombie apocalypse movie. Where you could just keep taking on zombies and running, man. like. A lot of these guys are skilled, man. You know, you get into an altercation, you might be able to beat three, four, let's say you can beat five guys like me. Well, the eighth, ninth, tenth, the twentieth, and seventy-fifth dude, you're gonna be dead. And unfortunately I was in uh I was in a restaurant in my Manila and I saw a foreigner get the beat to death, bro. Nah, he was sitting there with his Filipina girlfriend and he slapped her for some reason. I don't know, it was a white dude. I don't know if he was uh I don't know if he's German or sweet. I don't know. I didn't really get a good look at the guy, but he slapped her. 
and the Filipino dudes just, man, hitting him with chairs and stabbing him, bro, and stomping him, bro. By the time the ambulance came, like, I've been around dead people before. His body was lifeless. Like, it's one thing to be unconscious. A lot of people understand, like, dead weight. So you can be unconscious and your body is limp, but you still have your life force inside of you. I can't explain it, but it's an essence of your being where you're just, you're, you're sleeping, so you're unconscious. But when your body leaves you, when your soul leaves your body, there's a dead weight to it. And I'm not into, I'm, I'm not a, I can't, I'm not a uh, scientist. I can't explain it to you, but your soul has a buoyancy. And when that leaves your body, that's some dead weight. I don't know if you ever had to carry a dead person. But anyway, I'm just saying that to you because I, I finally figured it out. Out of my three channels, what I'm going to do, Let's Go, Let's Go is going to be the martial arts channel. And unfortunately, uh, like I shared in my last video, I've come to find out that my $1,500 a month salary that I'm living on here in the Philippines, I've exceeded it. Um, so I arrived here on the 7th of February, guys. And then the 7th of March, well, it was actually the 1st of March, I went to, uh, I went to immigration with Yoni. And we got a 30-day extension because I couldn't afford this 60-day this extension and the alien certificate of residency. I couldn't afford that card because I had spent so much money on hotels and eating out and transportation because I was, you know, misled that, or I was beguiled that I could live, I too could live off of $800 a month in the Philippines. So I already spent my budget. So I got the 30 day um, visa extension. So then when uh, that was about to expire, um, so I got that February, that was about to expire Wait, I got that in March. That was about to expire April 7th. So uh, Yoni and I went to the main immigration and in, uh, Intramuros, and we got a six month extension with an ACR card. And to be honest with you guys, I really couldn't afford that as well. But, you know, I, ha I didn't have a choice because one thing you don't want to do is let your visa expire. You know, I've seen too many programs and YouTube videos where foreigners like their visa expire, you get arrested by the PNB. I think that's the Filipino National um, Bureau of Investigation. I don't know what it stands for. I didn't want that to happen, man, because I'm here for the duration. So we went ahead and got the six month uh, visa and the alien registration certification card, which allows me to open up bank accounts and to um, rent things and do different things. So it was a big nut to, to bust, so I spent that money. So now I'm in the holding pattern until <clears throat> the the beginning of next month to get another 1500 And being that I've paid the first last security for this condo and I've paid my, mem my, my gym membership startup fees and got my six month visa and the ACR card, then I can go ahead and have a budget where I can start traveling to different places to look for the martial arts master. So until then, the Let's Go channel is going to be the martial arts guys I train with here. And it's just gonna be a conversation I'm gonna have with them, like, you know, their thoughts on martial arts, how long they've been training, uh, what type of style they train in, what do they feel is the benefit of that style. That's gonna be on Let's Go, it's gonna be a more of a conversational thing. On my Patreon is going to be actual training footage because a couple of the martial arts gyms I went to, um, they don't really mind me videotaping these, the conversations, but they don't want to videotape the sessions because they too are monetizing uh, their training principles, whether it's streaming or online subscriptions or whatever. So I have to be respectful of that. But they did say I could put it on my Patreon because the Patreon is going to be for paying members. Um, the Come Go With Me guys, I just figured it out, man, just uh, today, that until I can actually travel to different places, what I'm going to do to keep you guys entertained and informed and educated and enlightened about living in the Philippines, I'm going to share with you my day-to-day -day, uh, travels and interactions like going to the gym, going to the market, crossing the street, using credit cards, using debit cards, contacting your bank, what to do if your card gets locked. Um, how to not, the most important one, how to not get robbed, man. 
Um, I think I think a lot of these YouTubers, and I'm not trying to be negative or cause smoke. A lot of these YouTubers, they give you this like fictional vacation type of experience, and I'm not going to say any any names because some of these guys are big and they're, they're famous. You follow them, but when I look at their content, me now that I'm living here. They give you like a fictionalized vacation view. What I mean by that is they don't give you the down and dirty and maybe they've perfected their existence here. I'm, just today, I finally got settled in in this specific city. This is uh, Apolino City. And I finally got settled in. Like I said, I got gym, martial arts, paid my rent, my water, electricity, garbage, internet. And uh, like I said, you know, got my six month extension. But it's not as pretty as they painted out to be. So my 1500 a month, which I've exceeded for the last two months, because um, today is April 7th. This is my second month here. Um, I've just come to find out that I have to be very careful with my expenditures as far as like travel. What I mean by travel, I mean talk about transportation, getting back and forth, like going to these far dojos and you got to get a grab. I don't, I don't want to do that anymore. It's, it's cost prohibitive. So what I'm going to share with you is my day-to-day -day travels. Like I, got, I have to walk to the martial arts place. I got to walk to the gym, and it's a nice walk through different various communities. And I get to experience the down and dirty of the Philippines, whereas these other YouTubers are telling you about their little communities that they've been in for a while, and you know they're all touchy feely and safe. I'm giving you boots on the ground, new dude, just. Like, just look at yourself moving into a new hood and you don't know anybody and you don't have a car and you still haven't figured out quite the buses and the and the transportation, so you got to walk a lot. So, you know, there's pros and cons. So I'm going to share that with you. My transactions, going to the supermarket, the wet market, um, the malls, um, catching the buses and the the uh, the tricycles, the motorcycles called Joyride and the catching the catching the uh it's like an uber but it's called a grab um on my other videos over on come let's go come go with me i talked to you about don't taking taxis here i don't i think that's a bad uh rap and i just wanted to share that with you because uh what's going to happen is um as i share with you over on my patreon um anything under the 25 dollar tier is just a donation i'm going to be making videos there starting um, toward the end of this, start toward the middle of this month to ramp it up for next month. I encourage you guys to go over to my Patreon and see what's going on because at the $25 tier, it's going to be my my actual martial arts training here in Apolino City. Um, I'm training at two different places and they, each place offers um, three or four different um, disciplines of martial arts. So I'm going to be documenting that there. And then the $50 tier is going to be all about how to meet and date and how to meet and attract and date the right Filipina. And I'm really happy to be in this country, so I'm not trying to be offensive to my hosting country. <clears throat> but women are women are women, no matter where you go. And here in the Philippines, I find that there's four distinct types of Filipinas, man. So let's just, uh, let's just get it off the, let's, off the rip. Let's just get it off get it off the, my chest let's talk about it the first one is a scammer and if you're in america or another foreign country western country you look to come here a lot of guys go on to these online web dating websites i'm not going to name any names of the websites because i'm not endorsing them and one fourth of the women on there are scammers so what they want to do they'll give you a sob story you'll send them some money it can go anything from my grandmother died, to my dad died, to my cat died, my dog died, my baby sick, whatever. And they get it, they get you to send the money. Oh, I need money for a load. The load is how they use the internet. And so you got guys sending them money or I'm getting ready to get evicted or whatever. And you're sending them money. That might even be the right person. Let's say it's not the real person, let's say it is the right person. But if you if you get on the plane to come over here and meet this person, they they're not gonna meet you. So that's let's call them a scammer. Number two, we're gonna call them as a, as a hustler. And this lady to me is just very, it's the same identity of a prostitute. So what they'll get you to do is to, um, they will exchange like nude photos or video of chats with you 
um, of their nude body, and maybe you guys can do mutual masturbation. I'm not sure. I blocked those people, and uh, they're gonna get money from you, dude. You're gonna be sending money. You know what I mean? The third type, man, is the one who um, she's just looking for a better life, dude. She's just looking for somebody to bail her out of her poverty. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing or a good thing. You know, women in America do it. Women in other countries do it. It's, let's call it hypergamy. If you guys don't know what hypergamy is, look it up. I don't think it's a bad thing, but I don't think that they really love you for you or they really care about you as an individual. They look at you more like you're objectified as, you know, Captain Save of whatever, right? And the fourth one, the one that I found is, uh, I think, the most appealing is there's some loving Filipinas. They just want to have a, a good man and a good relationship where you guys build each other up, help each other out through this this uh, this thing called life, man. Whether you want to call life a game or it's a serious event or it's an adventure or it's a journey. So um, over on my Patreon, the $50 level, I'm going to talk to you guys about that. And, and that applies not just in the Philippines, not just in Southeast Asia. Dude, it applied in Vegas. I had so many guys I was coaching on Vegas because a lot of the strippers are very beautiful. And I'm not going to say all, but a large majority of them, they're basically prostitutes, bro. Like you dating a stripper, you're going to be supplying money and drugs and a lavish lifestyle. Even though they got money, they're just going to use you for your money. You know what I mean? Or these exotic dancers or, you know, these only, only fans, girls or whatever. Same thing in California. So there's always going to be four types of women. So I think that's I think that's going to be a valuable thing that you guys are going to learn there. That's at the fifty dollar level. The hundred dollar level, as I said in my last video, is going to be basically a coaching call. Like you guys can talk, contact me for a coaching call, and we can talk about just whatever you want to talk about. I can be your accountability buddy. So this next level I'm going to have for you guys, man. This is going to be the two hundred dollar level. And this is what I'm excited about. This is my actual, my body transformation journey. So um, I, I have to, I have to lose like 60 pounds and get in really fantastic shape uh, for three reasons. Number one, of course, <clears throat> the producers and directors that had me come over here initially, they're going to be shooting uh, some movies in um, Thailand, Vietnam, and the Philippines. And these are like futuristic barbarian movies. So even though I'm an, I play an older dude, like an older instructor, like an older wise dude that young dudes come to, to learn about training and martial arts and fighting. My she, my scenes are shirtless. I got to be in shape and ripped and just, you know, swole. Number two, man, uh, for health purposes, it's just, uh, you know, through just getting older, I've been on high blood pressure medication and, uh, you know, like fatty liver disease, you know, prostate issues. And I just know that getting in shape, like eating vegetables and fruit and, and fish and uh, drink a lot of water and eat, eating a lot of salads and staying away from processed foods is just healthier overall. And number three, you know, I'm getting older, so I'm looking to um, experience what's called the fountain of youth. So I know for a fact that's going to be fascinating for you guys because right now I'm losing weight. I don't have a scale and I haven't jumped on the scales in the gyms because they're in kilos. So I have to figure out how to do a conversion, which I'm going to do probably this weekend. But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys, man, and uh, let you know what's going on. So, uh, you know, thanks for watching the video, guys. And uh, just because I'm trying to play this YouTube game, man, I ask that you thumbs up the video if you, if you stayed this long. And, uh, you know, like the video subscribe to the channel if you're new hit the notification bell for all so you know whenever i'm posting videos and leave a comment i find that it's very important to leave a comment for the algorithm because the comment shows um engagement and interaction so um you know i encourage you guys to check out my other two channels come go with me and let's go the description links are in the i mean the links are to the channels are in the description and I'm very excited to share this with you, the, 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 the direction of the channel here. It's always been like a mental channel here at OG Silverback, but I'm going to the next level of metaphysics and esoteric type stuff to enlighten and illuminate you guys and to help you guys make the decision to make a leap in your life to go forth 
and do great things. So with that being the quote I'm going to leave you with today is, let us prepare our minds as if we'd come to the very end of life. Let us postpone nothing. Let us balance life's books each day. The one who puts the finishing touches on their life each day is never short of time. And this is from Seneca Moral Letters, 1017B. Take care and thank you for watching, guys.